thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, event can you see my slides yes it is very clear no problem you can continue okay uh uh i am working as a uh, director of formulation for providence therapeutics uh, located in calgary canada uh, providence therapeutics is uh, the largest mrna vaccine company in canada and one of the leading mrna vaccine players in the world uh, at this uh, time of covid you have heard of uh, a lot about uh, mrna vaccines so i decided to give a basic uh, talk on the mrna vaccines and uh, since i am in a industry uh, and we are digestion yeah. kindly switch over to the slide show is it okay so all right hello yeah okay okay Uh, before uh, we had all these conferences we actually uh, come to the uh, location and due to the pandemic uh, everything is changed now we are doing the virtual conferences and it is uh, convenient on one side and maybe not uh, convenient if you think on the other side and as a as the pandemic also uh, boosted up a new vaccine technology called mrna vaccine and uh, that is my area of research and you all heard of a vaccine but uh, maybe you all know this uh, the definition of vaccine i'm just giving you a basic uh, idea of vaccines also i uh, most of the uh, uh, things i am uh, presenting here are uh, available on the public domain and i have given the uh, references at the bottom so you can read uh, these articles for more information a vaccine is a biological product that can be used to safely induce an immune response uh, against any infection or disease i underline the word safely because a lot of uh, concerns are going on on the safety of vaccines and a lot of people are against vaccines and the vaccines uh, uh, can be classified based on uh, the derivatives from where we are derived derive them the vaccine can be either live attenuated viruses or the toxins uh, subunits proteins or a nucleic acid like mrna or dna and uh, a lot of research are going on to develop live cell vaccines uh, so that will be the next stage of vaccines so how a vaccine works we receive uh, all of us receive one or more vaccines uh, in our lifetime at least the tetanus vaccines and uh, we receive a injection in the muscles and a vaccine is administered like a protein or a virus and it uh, is administered usually with another set of uh, chemical entity uh, it, most of the uh, Uh, first generation vaccines have uh, alums as the chemical in entity that's called the adjuvant the adjuvant give the body a uh, danger signal and when uh, the danger signal is there the dendritic cells start uh, uh, activated and it uh, take up the vaccine the vaccine molecule then it uh, present the uh, the protein to a cd4 cell and then the cd4 uh, gave it to it uh, b b cells or the t cells uh, this is a very complex mechanism 
And if you'd like to learn more about uh, the mechanism of vaccines, uh, you can uh, read this article. Uh, this gives a very basic uh, understanding of uh, how a vaccine works. Uh, immunology is still a rapidly growing science. So in almost every day, uh, new additions are going on to see how the vaccines are working or new mechanisms are coming out, new knowledge is added to the field of vaccines or immunology. So we have, uh, we are able to introduce a vaccine to the body to uh, develop an immune response against a uh, disease. And the pandemic actually, or the COVID uh, introduced a new type of vaccine called the mRNA vaccine. And what is an mRNA vaccine? An mRNA vaccine is a, a foreign mRNA encoding an antigen. I said foreign because that is something we are introducing to the body against a disease. If it is already there, we don't need to introduce that to the body. That encode an antigen, uh, that's a protein. And uh, the foreign mRNA encoding antigen is introduced into the somatic cells, like as I showed in the previous slide. And once uh, the mRNA vaccine is in, uh, the mRNA is introduced into the body, uh, the body started producing the proteins and uh, eventually the body uh, develop an immune response against a disease. And like any vaccines, uh, the mRNA vaccine is also administrated on day one and after 21 days a booster dose will be administrated so that gives a long lasting memory uh, to the body against a particular disease and the mrna vaccine is like any other uh, scientific development is a res result of a long lasting research by hundreds of scientists and billions of dollars investment. The history of mRNA vaccine started in 1961, where the discovery of mRNA takes place. Then after multiple, uh, like uh, the mRNA, uh, normally the mRNA is very unstable because uh, in, the, in the environment there are enzymes called uh, RNAs and once the RNAs uh, meet the RNA and it immediately degrade the or digest the RNA. So there were uh, attempts to stabilize the RNA by introducing uh, chemical modification to the RNA. And uh, the, at the same time, there were uh, attempts to uh, introduce uh, mRNA for generating proteins. In, into the body as a protein replacement. And uh, in 1990, the first concept of mRNA vaccine is introduced. And then uh, the mRNA is used to modify the dendritic cell, the immune, one, of the, one type of immune cells to see if they can act as against cancer. And it keeps going and in the year 2020, the first mRNA vaccine came to the clinical trial. And currently, uh, most of you know, uh, two of the mRNA vaccines are available commercially. And there are a bunch of vaccines are uh, coming to uh, the clin uh, clinic. Uh, all of them are against COVID-19, but uh, the mRNA vaccine will be uh, a lot of mRNA vaccines will be coming against uh, different diseases uh, like um, infectious diseases and also against uh, uh, autoimmune diseases and also cancer. So this is the, uh, a brief history of uh, the mRNA vaccine development. So what is an mRNA? This is a, uh, like a cartoon uh, figure of an mRNA. And as, a, as chemist, uh, you all know what is an a DNA or an mRNA. Uh, but in addition to the, uh, the chemical structure you uh, sh have seen in the 
textbooks, uh, the mRNA used uh, in the current uh, pharmaceutical field or for vaccines have slight modifications and it starts with uh, the one end, end of the mRNA called the phi dash cap. Usually a phi dash cap is a modified uh, disaccharide or trisaccharide. Developing new phi, uh, the capping agents is a very active research. And also if anybody is able to develop a much better capping agent that uh, revolutionized the industry and the pharmaceutical industry because that capping agent introduce uh, how the mRNA act uh, in the body and that improve the efficiency. And after the capping agent, there is an uh, untranslational region that's only to, there it's a uh, sequence of nucleotides uh, followed by the coding region, which is the uh, nucleotide series that codes for the protein. If it is uh, for the COVID vac uh, vaccine, then it codes the spike protein of the uh, COVID virus. Then again, there is an U UTR. And then at the end, there's a uh, sequence of adenosine. Uh, that's a poly A, it's called a poly A tail that improved the stability of the RNA. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, nucleotides are modified to improve the stability of the RNA, especially the uracil one is modified. In addition to all this chemical structure, there is an important parameter that uh, determine whether the mRNA can be act as a vaccine or not, and that is called the purity. Purifying the mRNA after the manufacturing process is a challenging and a different industries has different uh, technologies to do that. And what are the advantages of an uh, mRNA vaccine? They are efficient, very efficient and safe. And for a pharmaceutical uh, perspective, they are very easy to manufacture and very rapid within weeks. Uh, once there is a disease within weeks, uh, an mRNA can be, or a vaccine can be generated. And the process is uh, free of cells or any live organism. That is a very important uh, parameter for the pharmaceutical industry if it is free of uh, cells or animal origin. And a single facility can be used to manufacture different types of mRNA because mRNAs are easy to degrade. So if we manufacture the mRNA in one tank and then uh, after cleaning the tank, it can be used for manufacturing another set of mRNA that saves a lot of time and money. Also, new time, when there is a dis new disease uh, started spreading, it is very easy to generate an, a new mRNA or multiple, uh, the same mRNA can be used to like, multiple sequences can be added. So it will give a better, you know, um, more efficient vaccines. This cartoon shows a general understanding of mRNA vaccine manufacturing. Uh, so the target pathogen, uh, let's say a virus is identified, then its genome is sequenced and uh, a vaccine is designed. A vaccine is designed means the a DNA or plasmid is designed with a sequence of the mRNA that need to be manufactured then mRNA is produced and then a, and purified, and then a formulation is manufactured. And then the formulation is like, you see the vaccines, it comes in small vials, uh, and then the vaccination takes place. This is a simple cartoon, but for a pharmaceutical industry people, this is a lot of work and a lot of documentation. And to make sure that Everything is perfect. A bit more detail of the mRNA synthesis mechanism. As I said, the plasmid is designed, then 
the plasmid is used as a template to synthesis an RNA. So it's a template assisted synthesis where the uh, plasmid is added to a uh, solution of nucleotides and then different enzymes are added that leads to the manufacturing and the production of the RNA. Then it is the template or the plasmid will be degenerated or degraded using a DNA enzyme. Then the different purification steps will be done and then the RNA will be identified, uh, like uh, purified and uh, 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 submitted to the next step. Uh, the next step is uh, more important for a for chemist. Uh, before going to that, I just show the uh, how the mRNA is act as a vaccine. So there are uh, two different types of mRNAs. Uh, mRNA can be basically uh, classified into a conventional mRNA or self-amplifying mRNA. Uh, the self-amplifying mRNA is a uh, currently developing uh, field. Uh, the current vaccines are based on the conventional mRNA. So once the mRNA is synthesized, it is formulated into a it is formulated and administered to the body where the mRNA formulation is taken by the endosome and then the vaccine uh, it generate the protein and uh, the protein will be expressed and the vaccine, the body is able to do the, uh, Im develop the immune def uh, defense against the, uh, uh, the pathogen. Uh, the, so we cannot directly administer the mRNA to the body because uh, there are a lot of RNAs in the environment that degrade the uh, uh, RNA. For that, uh, the mRNA need to be packaged uh, in a uh, packed in a uh, any NCAP, any uh, protective layer that uh, protect the RNA from the RNAs and the protective layer can be polymers, uh, lipids, or any polycation because the RNA is uh, has phosphate groups that uh, act as a polyanion. And the packet, the uh, mRNA uh, is encapsulated into nanoparticles because the nanoparticles are very easy to administer. Currently, all the vaccines in the mRNA field are based on lipid nanoparticles. Uh, because uh, of the long history of lipids in the pharmaceutical industry and also the uh, easy and method to synthesize lipids and purify them compared to other molecules like polymers or any other polycations. A lipid mRNA nanoparticle has five different components. The first one is the nucleic acid. Uh, in the case of mRNA vaccines, it is the mRNA, or it can be DNA or even small molecules that can be added to the uh, nanoparticles. Then there is an ionizable lipid. This is the most important part of each uh, pharmaceutical company that work in the field because uh, companies spend a lot of time to develop new lipids and patent them and um, improve the efficiency of them. The important parameter of this uh, ionizable lipid is that they have a pKa close to seven. So they will be positively charged uh, below this pH where uh, the, mRNA is what, uh, the mRNA solution is mixed with the lipid. That leads to the formation of a charge, charge interaction between the lipid and the nucleic acid. Then there are two helper lipids one is DSPC and the other one is cholesterol. Uh, DSPC can be changed and a lot of research is going on to develop cholesterol derivatives to improve the efficiency. Uh, the helper lipids components are two. Uh, one is uh, cholesterol and uh, the other one is a synthetic lipid. And then there is a PEG lipid that improve the colloidal stability and the circulation. These are some of the common uh, the lipids used for uh, 
the mrna delivery and how the mrna lipid nanoparticles are manufactured the lipid is uh, organo organo so dissolved in uh, ethanol and the mrna is uh, dissolved in water in a buffer at ph 5.5 then they are mixed at very high speed this mixing technology is again uh, uh, a technical know how of different industries once they mix they interact with uh, each other because of the charge charge interaction and uh, uh, once this is mixed the ph of the solution will be increased by adding more buffer and once the ph is increased uh, that means we are adding more and more water so the lipid, uh, ethanol solution under a more and more dilution that force the small uh, charge clusters to form a bigger nanoparticle because of the hydrophobic interaction of the lipid because the ethanol molecules are removed from uh, the vicinity of uh, the lipids due to dilution and this leads to a nanoparticle of roughly 80 nanometer size that will be further formulated into uh, by adding a cryoprotectant like sucrose so it will be free it can be stored at uh, minus 80 or minus 20 degrees celsius and uh, some of the challenges the current industry are facing are the availability of raw materials because um, currently everybody wants a lot of lipids and nucleic acids and one another important parameter is the stability of the mrna uh, vaccine and also there are a lot of opportunities to develop new delivery methods so as a chemistry uh, research scientist as researchers uh, you uh, guys can work into these areas the as i said the mrna is uh, mrna vaccines are very and not that stable at uh, conventional uh, temperatures like room temperature or in the fridge it needs a very low temperature uh, these are the three major uh, vaccines uh, that has uh, and you can see the different stability uh, criteria here and none of the vaccines are more stable for a long time at 2 to 8 degrees celsius or at room temperature you see here uh, they degrade within 24 hours uh, as i said before uh, the future of mrna vaccine is uh, very bright because the covid-19 showed that the pandemic shows mrna vaccine are very potential and very easy to manufacture so, and this will lead to development of new vaccines and also uh, the mrna vaccines uh, will be uh, uh, utilized for treating a bunch of other diseases uh, including uh, cancer uh, this means the mrna vaccines will be the future of uh, the vaccine technology at the end i would like to thank uh, my current employees provident Thera- providence therapeutics and also my phd supervisor professor sri kumar um, his mentorship uh, helped me to uh, achieve uh, what i am today and also thank you for the matcon organizing committee i hope i maintain the time okay thank you dr rajesh krishnan the talk is open for discussion i think you are involved in the encapsulation of the vaccine in nanoparticles yeah that's right oh okay and does your lab synthesize the vaccine yeah we we are synthesizing the mrna the lipids and also for the large scale manufacturing we are working with uh, cros because it's a, a, we have to prepare millions of doses for the and there can canada okay i think you could not recognize dr srikumar because of his mask <laughs> he has a oh. large size mask okay srikumar 
I cannot see anybody. Ah, Rajesh, you are in Mooli. Where are you? Where are you, sir? Rajesh, you are in the same way. അവിടെ ഇത് ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ട്രയൽ കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഉപയോഗിച്ച് തുടങ്ങിയോ ഇല്ല ഫേസ് ത്രീ ആണ് ഇപ്പൊ വൈറസിന്റെ പ്രോട്ടീൻ സീക്വൻസ് ചെയ്യും എന്നിട്ട് അതിന്റെ അതിന് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഡി എൻ എ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയെടുക്കും എന്നിട്ട് ഡി എൻ എ കത്തുന്ന് നമ്മള് എം ആർ എൻ എ ഡി എൻ എസ് ടെംപ്ലേറ്റ് ഈ ഫൈവ് ഡാഷ് ത്രീ ഡാഷ് കോംപ്ലിമെന്റാരിറ്റി ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ഈ എം ആർ എൻ എ സന്തോസ് അല്ല അപ്പൊ അത് എങ്ങനെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഇതിനെ നമ്മളുടെ ഒരു കൺട്രോളിലേക്ക് വരിക ഒരു പർട്ടിക്കുലർ സീക്വൻസ് ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി അതാ പ്ലാസ്മിഡ് നമ്മൾ ആ സീക്വൻസ് അനുസരിച്ച് ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്യും എന്നിട്ട് പ്ലാസ്മിഡ് സിന്തസ് ചെയ്യുന്നു പ്ലാസ്മിഡ് മീഡിയേറ്റഡ് സിന്തസ് ആണ് അല്ലേ അതെ അതെ അപ്പൊ അതൊരു ഈ ക്യാപ്പിങ്ങിന് കറസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ആയിട്ട് അപ്പൊ ഫൈവ് ഡാഷ് പൊസിഷനിലാണ് നമ്മൾ ക്യാപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ക്യാപ്പിങ്ങിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഡൈസാക്രൈഡ് ട്രൈസാക്രൈഡ് തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുള്ളതിന് അത് നമുക്കൊരു റാൻഡം പിക്കിംഗ് ആണോ അത് നമ്മൾ സ്ക്രീൻ ചെയ്തെടുക്കുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഇത് ഇമ്മ്യൂണോ ജെനസിറ്റി കൂടുതൽ ഏതാണ് വരുന്നത് പിന്നെ സ്റ്റെബിലിറ്റി ഇമ്പ്രൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഏതാണ് അതനുസരിച്ചിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ പിക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് പിന്നെ ഇത് കൊമേഴ്സ്യൽ അവൈലബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള വളരെ കുറച്ചെണ്ണേ ഉള്ളൂ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ലിപ്പിഡ് പ്രൊഫൈലും നമുക്ക് വളരെ പ്രശ്നമാണ് അല്ലേ ഏത് തരത്തിലുള്ള ലിപ്പിഡ് എത്ര കാർബൺ ആറ്റംസ് ഉള്ള ചെയിൻസ് വേണം എന്നുള്ളതൊരു പ്രശ്നമല്ലേ അതെ അതെ അതിന്റെ പി കെ കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യാം ഹൈഡ്രോഫോബിക് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ എത്ര മാത്രം ഹൈഡ്രോഫോബിസിറ്റി അതിനൊരു ക്വാണ്ടിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഹൈഡ്രോഫോബിസിറ്റി ഉണ്ട് പിന്നെ അതിന്റെ പി കെ ആണ് മെയിൻ ഇത് കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിന്റെ റിലീസ് ഉണ്ടാവില്ല ഇത് സെല്ലിനകത്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിയുമ്പോൾ അത് റിലീസ് ചെയ്യില്ല അപ്പൊ ഓക്കെ രാജേഷ് ഏതായാലും ഇപ്പോൾ കണ്ടതിൽ സന്തോഷം സന്തോഷം സാറേ Uh, you can uh, any, contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh uh, Krishnan for selecting a very relevant topic on behalf of the organizing committee. Let us thank Dr. Rajesh Krishnan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We will pass on to the next speaker, Dr. Krishnan Omar IM.